Hey, what's up? This is Caleb Ward with School of Motion, and in this After Effects tutorial, we're gonna be talking about one of the most exciting features in all of After Effects. Now, I'm not talking about 3D text, and I'm not talking about how to create an explosion in After Effects. No, I'm talking about the Collapse Transformations tool. Now, this tool may not fall on your radar very often, but it has the power to completely change your entire After Effects workflow. So if you're ready to learn something very important and something slightly technical, let's hop in. Now, I want you to note that you can download the free project file included in this tutorial by clicking the link and heading over to schoolofmotion.com. There will be a link in the description of this video. So before we get going here, I want to talk to you about what the switch actually does. Yes, you know that it may depixelate your vector layers, and yes, it may do some weird stuff to your 3D layers whenever you pre-compose them, but let's talk about the practical uh, implications of what this switch actually does to your layers in the timeline and to do that we're gonna talk a little bit about the rendering order so in a typical After Effects uh, composition the render order goes like this After Effects renders out your mask and then moves on to effects it moves on to transformation data blending modes and then layer styles now you don't have to think about this most of the time because it pretty much comes second nature because, you know, you would expect that you'd be able to scale up your layer, uh, apply your mask, add your effects, add your blending modes, and then your layer styles. That's just the typical order that you use whenever you're working in After Effects. But whenever you select this little star button right here, something new happens, and I think you may know what I'm talking about. So I'm going to go ahead and click play here and preview what happens here. So I'm going to play this back, and as you can see, whenever you select this box, this continuously rasterize or collapse transformation box here, After Effects will take the transformation data and it will actually compute it before it computes anything else. And sometimes, especially in the case of continuously rasterizing, it will actually add in a new step in the process called rasterizing. And let me stop and talk a little bit about what rasterizing means. So After Effects is a raster-based software, which means it uses pixel information to calculate data inside of After Effects. It's not a vector software, which means it would use a mathematical formula to create uh, the shape layers and different objects inside. So because After Effects is a raster-based software, any asset that gets imported into After Effects must be rasterized or turned into a bitmap file, a pixel-based file, before After after Effects can actually use it. So, so that's not a problem the majority of the time. When you're importing video or JPEGs or uh, PNGs, they're already pixelated and rasterizing doesn't even need to occur in order for them to be usable to After Effects. Now, the problem is whenever you're working with Adobe Illustrator files or any other vector format that doesn't include pixel information, After Effects will actually rasterize it as soon as you import it into the software. Now, that's a problem because whenever you drag and drop it into your composition, you'll notice that it typically gets pixelated. So this is where rasterizing comes into play. Rasterizing is the process of recomputing that vector layer's information so that it will get rid of the pixelation. So let me kind of show you in action what this means. So right now we have a little bitty logo. I'm gonna go ahead and scale this up so this is just the School of Motion logo. And as you can see, it is pixelated. And the reason why it's pixelated is because whenever we imported it into After Effects, After Effects only rasterized it to this size right here. It's super small. So we actually want it to be really big and we don't want there to be any pixelization. So in order for this to work, what we're gonna have to do is toggle our switches here and just hit the continuously rasterize button. And when we do that, After Effects will rasterize out this layer. And you'll see that it recomputes all of the information and you'll get really nice sharp edges on your logos. Now this rasterizing occurs at frame one. If we set a keyframe, so let's set a keyframe for scale and then we'll scale it up over the course of one second to just something really big. Let's say that is the look we're going for, ool off. We can go ahead and play this back and you'll see that it still is not pixelated. 
So what this button will do is recompute the vector file. It'll rasterize the vector file for every single frame in which transformation data is changed. So if we drop down the menu here under the transform menu, anytime you change any of these parameters here, rotation, opacity, position, anchor point, and scale, After Effects will recompute and re-rasterize that vector file. So it's the end of your pixelated vector woes. Now, another cool thing that you can do is continuously rasterize files that are not vector files. So in order to kind of illustrate this, I'm gonna create a new solid. So I just hit Command Y and we'll call this a demo solid and hit OK. So I'm gonna go up here to our pen tool and I'm just gonna kind of cut out just a simple little triangle here. So let's say we have this triangle, but we actually want to scale it up. So let's go ahead and scale it up and you'll start to see something very troubling. So you'll see that the edges here are very pixelated and very fuzzy. And that is not ideal, especially if you're working on a shape-based project that you need really sharp edges. Um, so what we can do is we can change the order of operations. So remember that right now this triangle is being computed with the typical After Effects rendering order. So the masks are being computed first. So the triangle here is being computed first then effects are rendered, then the transformation data is happening. So these masks are being rendered out at a certain transformation percentage. And then anytime we scale it up, they're still locked into that transformation that was uh, smaller at the beginning before we tr transformed it uh, to be much larger. So uh, it's very, very pixelated. And so what we can do is go in here and hit the continuously rasterize button and you'll notice that you'll get some nice sharp edges there. So that's incredibly useful uh, if you do a lot of shape based work or solid based work. And, you know, if we masked out something and then we decided to scale it up later, it wasn't the end of the world. Uh, we could just use that button and it would. Uh, apply the effect to the, the timeline. Now, one problem that you're going to run into whenever you're working with this is the fact that the rendering order is changed. So because the transform data happens before the effects, your effects are not going to be tied to this layer. So for example, if I drop in fractal noise onto this layer now, you'll see that we have fractal noise there. But if we scale it down, you'll notice how the fractal noise doesn't actually go with the object. You would expect that the fractal noise would actually scale up. The reason why that's happening is exactly what's outlined here. So the effects are being computed after the transformation data. So there is no link between the effects and the transformations. So it kind of acts a little bit more like a mat instead of uh, a typical layer. So that's just something to think about and it can be a little annoying, but it's just one of the realities about the way in which After Effects computes this data. So again, if we deselect that star, we can now go in here and as we scale this down, you'll see that the fractal noise is actually attached to it because the rendering order is now changed. So I'll just go ahead and click this back. So that is the continuously rasterize feature, and it's an incredibly important and useful feature inside of After Effects. But this switch does one more very important thing. So I'm gonna hop over here to a new composition, composition number four here, and I'm gonna explain a little bit about what the collapse transformations feature actually does. So we've already talked a little bit about what happens when you actually click on this switch in After Effects. It changes the order in which After Effects renders something. However, whenever you apply this switch to a nested composition, that's a composition inside of another composition, so like a pre-comp, it will actually connect the transformation data between this layer and all of the layers inside the other layer. And what I mean by that is if we were to select this layer, any scaling that we do to this composition will actually affect all of the layers inside of this composition. So this is the contained composition and this is the nested composition. So this chart kind of illustrates everything that we're talking about here. So I'm going to go ahead and fit this and we'll make sure it's full res here. So the way in which After Effects will render out this composition is kind of different and kind of unique. So what's going to happen is all of the mask and effects inside of this composition will be rendered out first. 
And then the transformation data between this layer and all the layers inside will now be connected. So as you scale, it'll scale up all the layers inside. As you rotate, it'll rotate all the layers inside. And so everything is connected with the transformation values. Now you'll then be able to move on to blending modes and layer styles inside of this layer. So all of the layers here would have their blending modes and their layer styles uh, adjusted and rendered out. And then we would move up to computing mask for this layer, effects, blending modes, and then layer styles. So this process is a little confusing. So instead of looking at this composition anymore, I'm gonna actually hop over here to our composition number six and kind of give you an analogy here. So typically in After Effects, pre-comps are rendered out as video footage. And what I mean by that is let's say we have this icon here. I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this icon. I'm gonna push it back in 3D space. Again, we have a 3D scene here and I'm gonna move it over here and then I'll duplicate that and move it over here to where it's kind of cut off here. I'm gonna select all three of these icons and hit Shift Command C to pre-compose. And you can even go up here to layer, pre-compose, and it'll do the exact same thing. And we'll call this icons and hit okay. So this icons composition typically will not retain any sort of 3D data for the icons inside. So what I mean by that is if we go to layer new camera and just create any old camera here and hit C or the unified camera tool here, we can begin to move around in 3D space. And you'll see that if we make our uh, icons layer 3D here, that the edges kind of get cut off. And that is not ideal because we actually want our sequence to be 3D. We want these objects to interact in 3D space. So to fix that, what you can do is hit the collapse transformations button. So now we can see that we can move around and the edges are not being cut off and they actually retain their 3D data and information. Now, this is an incredibly useful tool if you do a lot of 3D shape work in After Effects. And uh, you'll notice actually, if we kind of zoom out here, that After Effects, this pre-comp is actually kind of a box instead of a typical 2D kind of window uh, or footage layer. So it actually has all of the 3D data inside and it's kind of contained inside this 3D box here. Cool. So that's super important because it allows us to move these objects in 3D space and they'll still retain their 3D information. So you see that as we kind of zoom down here, those objects have 3D capabilities. And so we can move them around here. Um, we can even scale them down and rotate them. So I'll hit W for rotation. And as you rotate them, they will actually still have all that 3D data inside. So typically in After Effects, if you pre-compose something, it's gonna render it out like it's footage. Now, when you do it this way, it renders it out much more like it's a folder that's kind of housing everything. And it's just a really handy tool if you're trying to clean up your timelines. So let's go over here to our seventh composition here. And another great benefit of using this feature is the ability to apply effects to multiple objects without having to drag and drop an effect onto each object. So what I mean by that is if we kind of use our unified camera here, you can see that we have a 3D scene. And again, like before, we have these 3D icons and they are just sitting on top of these pyramids. So let's say we wanted to add in a stylization. So let's Let's do like a glow. We'll drop in a glow onto these icons and you'll see that it actually applies a glow to all of the layers and not just one individual layer. But the cool thing is they will still retain that 3D data information. Now, you know, this is really great. However, there's one exception. Anytime you apply an effect to a layer or a pre-comp with this collapse transformations button selected, that layer will lose its ability to interact in 3D with the other layers in the composition. And what I mean by that is, I'm gonna go ahead and turn off this glow effect here. And I'll also go up here and delete the glow effect from our pre-composition. So now we can move the camera around and you'll notice how, you see how this background icon here, it goes behind the pyramid. That's you know super useful, it's retained its 3D information. But what happens when we apply the effect? Well, anytime you apply any effect, it will actually make it to where it loses its ability to interact with objects in your scene in 3D. And so, yes, it will still interact with the camera as if it's in 3D, but the objects 
other 3D objects in your scene will not be rendered out correctly. So that's just something to remember and think about. And then also, even if you have your effects turned off, it will not interact correctly with the objects in your scene. So the only fix is to completely delete that uh, the effects from your object. And the same is true for mask. If you apply a mask to this layer, all of the layers inside will lose their ability uh, to retain 3D properties with the other layers in your scene. And again, that goes back to this collapse transformation chart. So because we added in a mask or an effect, all of the uh, layers inside lose their ability to interact with the 3D uh, layers inside of the nested composition. So anytime you apply any of these four types of, I guess we can call them effects, but four different types of um, modifiers to your layers, you will lose the ability for your transformation data to interact independently. So uh, it's just something you think about, but it can be a super useful tool. So that's about it. I hope you found this tutorial to be useful. Collapse transformations is something that is incredibly useful, especially when you're working with uh, 3D compositions and you have a bunch of 2D layers that need to be spread out in 3D space. I personally use this all the time for um, 3D mats, so mats that are motion tracked into footage in 3D space. I will pre-compose them in my composition and it'll just kind of clear everything up. This is a great workflow tool and it's definitely something that I think you will find a lot of great uses for the more you sit down and mess around with it. So if you wanna learn more, go check out the article over at School of Motion. The article has way more information than I was able to get to in this tutorial about the way in which After Effects renders things out and a few other implications for using these features in After Effects. And again, if you want to download the project file used in this tutorial, you can do so by checking out the article at School of Motion. If you want to learn more about motion design, go check out the other tutorials and articles we have at School of Motion. And of course, if you want to take your skills up even further, check out the courses and boot camps over on the website. They are the best way to up your motion design skills in only a matter of weeks. Again, this has been Caleb Ward. We'll see you next time.